In this video, we're going to be looking at a couple of examples and we're going to be trying to find out how many total chiral centers you got in there. And in addition to that, we'll try to figure out how many total uh, stereoisomers you can have based on the number of chiral centers. So remember, the chiral centers um, is going to be a carbon that has either uh, four atoms or four different group of atoms attached to it. And that's what we're going to have to look throughout this molecule and figure out if we indeed have four different atoms or group of atoms attached to a particular carbon atom. And it's going to be a good idea if you can pause the session and maybe do this particular one on your own and see if it gets, uh, if you get the right answer. So let's uh, start out with the left side. And in the left side, I do see uh, this carbon right there. That's going to be your chiral center because on the top, you on the left here, you got chlorine. And then you got uh, this uh, top half of half of the ring and this bottom half of the ring. They are clearly different from one another. And then your fourth atom that's not shown here is going to be the hydrogen. So clearly you got everything different in this particular case. So that's going to be your first one. Moving along, I'm going to have this right there. That's going to be another chiral center. And that's because you got... Uh, a hydrogen you got the ring on the bottom here and then this on the left side on the right side the rings are also different um, so then if I look at maybe the next one here this should also be a chiral center because I got a hydrogen attached to it so I'm gonna go ahead and draw that out if it's hard to kind of see everything what's attached to it make sure you draw out every single atom there and then you got this top portion of the molecule that's got a kind of ring and you know this big chunk of the molecule that's different obviously than what you have on the bottom and even on the bottom side you can clearly see that this left side and this right side they are different if there was no double bond then they would not be different but since there's a double bond they are different from one another and as a result it's going to be chiral okay uh, I don't see anything else on this bottom ring to be chiral, so let's go ahead and move along to the right side there. When I look at this next chiral center, that's going to be this guy right there. Um, moving along, I'm going to have this as your chiral center. Uh, remember, this one right there is not a chiral center, even though some people may kind of look at it as a chiral center because uh, you have like you know three different uh, three atoms. Uh, three groups attached to it, but remember this: uh, the met there is a methyl group right there. Let me write that down here. That's a methyl group right there, and that's a methyl group right there. So since those are two be the same groups, they're not going to be. Um, that's not going to make them the chiral center. So now moving along, if I see the next one, it's going to be your. Don't take this one as your chiral center because that's got two hydrogens on it. Uh, this carbonyl carbon is not going to be chiral center because you've got only three things attached to it. You have to have four at least, so make sure you keep an eye on it. Your aromatic is not going to be any, uh, it's not going to be containing any of the chiral centers because in aromatics you've got double bonds and you're not going to have four different things attached to it. Moving along, uh, the only other thing I see here is actually going to be this particular carbon right there. So that's going to be another chiral center because you've got a methyl on the bottom, an ethyl on the right side, you got a hydrogen, and then you got this ring on the left side. Now, that's all I really see in terms of uh, the number of chiral centers there. So let's uh, go ahead and figure out the total there. Uh, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I got a total of six chiral centers. And if I want to figure out the total number of stereoisomers, I'll do 2 to the power n, where n is the number of chiral centers, so 2 to the power 6, and uh, let's see whatever that comes out to be. That's going to be 64, so you're going to have a total of 64 stereoisomers. Now, that's going to be the maximum number of stereoisomers we possibly have. You could very well have less than 64 if there is a internal plane of symmetry and some of those isomers would be uh, would be meso in that case but this one doesn't really have any internal plane of symmetry so you would still can have a maximum of 64 stereoisomers okay what about looking at this next one here so maybe it's a good idea to pause the session and uh, do this on your own
Well, someone might think that this is going to be chiral, but remember this is not chiral because uh, the top part of the ring uh, right there and this bottom part of the ring, they are the same, so that will not make it chiral. If there was a double bond or something else, then that would make them a chiral. Uh, look, moving along, there is the first chiral center I actually see is going to be this guy right there. That carbon, it's got chlorine on the bottom, and the the left side and the right side rings are different, and the fourth atom is going to be the hydrogen there. And then, in addition to that, I see this next one right there that's got uh, uh, the hydrogen, you got an ethyl grip on the top, and you got this uh, left side and the right side of the molecule is different. Moving along, this right there is also going to be chiral, that's because... Uh, the ring they're not the same anymore like uh, the top part of the ring has a double bond and the bottom part of the ring does not have a double bond so as a result they would make those different sides as we looking at them and then in addition to that this last one is also going to be your chiral center because you got the chlorine attached you got an hydrogen there and in addition to that you got this uh, top half of the ring and the bottom half of the ring, they are different from one another. So in this particular case, I got a total of one, two, three, four chiral centers. This is how you're gonna be figuring out the total number of chiral centers. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.